Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Allison, and I figured I would say hi. I'm out um, on my walking trail that I often go on, and I woke up stupid early this morning, so figured I'd take advantage and go out before it got too hot. Um, right on a tidal stream, and the ocean's just the other way, slightly out of sight. Um, <clears throat> Today I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys a bit about um, how to get into your doctor's office and see your doctors um, in a relatively short amount of time. Um, I know this can be a huge issue in our community just because, uh, well, we need to get seen and sometimes offices have insanely long wait times. And sometimes it's just really hard to get in in the first place. So, um, I just wanted to share with you some tips and tricks that I've learned. Um, the first one, and I think the biggest one, is when you call the office and they give you an appointment, ask them if you can be on their cancellation list. It's not an official thing. But many offices will have a list of patients who, um, a, who are considered urgent cases, and those patients often um, will be given any appointment that gets canceled. So if somebody else had an appointment scheduled and they call to cancel, usually offices have a policy of you need to can if you don't cancel 24 hours before the appointment, you get charged for it. So people will call up and cancel a day or two before their appointment. And if you're on their little cancellation list, when that person cancels, they call the people on the cancellation list instead of just giving it to the next random person who calls. This doesn't always work, but it is a nice Thing to try and it can be really helpful. Um, I've used this, this before and gotten in months, literally months earlier than I was told was possible. Um, for me, I, um, I use it like some of my regular doctors, like my, um, my physical therapist, she sometimes gets really booked up. So if we're having a hard time getting me the appointment I need um, when I want it, I will also put myself on the cancellation list and then if anybody else cancels that week, they call me and they say, hey, this time slot just opened. Do you want it? Um, so that can be really helpful. This is useful with pretty much any medical professional. Not all offices do it again, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, and even if they don't really have one, you can say, could I please, could you please let me know if there is a cancellation? same process. Um, uh, examples of how that's worked besides my PT. Um, big ones were with um, my partner, Al. Um, he was supposed to see an endocrinologist because we discovered that um, he had osteoporosis, which is really, really weird um, given that he's a man under 40. So we called the endocrinologist's office Told him what was going on and actually uh, his uh, surgeon was friends colleagues with the particular endocrinologist we were trying to see so his office called too to reinforce how important it was so when we called they were booking appointments scheduling appointments in January and we were calling in August <laughs> No, July. We called in July. And he got in in early September, even though his scheduled appointment was January 4th. So by asking to be on their wait list, he got in three months earlier than they, told, than they originally told him. Um, and again, this is one of those things that you can use to signal how important it is. This isn't necessarily something you'd want to use if you have a regular, um, you know, see you in three to six months kind of thing going on. 
but for a new doctor to get a diagnosis or if you've got weird you know, symptoms or something extreme's happening, that's the time to pull that one out and just be like, look, can you fit me in anywhere? Can you put me on your cancellation list? Let me know. So I just wanted to give you guys that suggestion. The other thing is if you have um, a more unusual condition, uh, it presents strangely, it, um, it hasn't been diagnosed yet, it's, you know, anything that's unusual, lead with that. So for Al, he had an acetabular fracture. Instead of breaking the femur bone, he broke the joint that connects the femur to the hip. So he literally broke the big, biggest bone in your body, the acetabellum, which is the big thing that gives your hip shape. Um, that's weird, period. But it's also, that's a type of injury that usually happens from a really, really severe incident. Um, usually that kind of break happens if you have a head-on collision and your car accordions or if you fall off a five-story building, things like that. And so slipping, and even though you went over, you know, head over heels, slipping and doing this from a height of about, you know, three feet or so, maybe four or five if you think he got that much air, is insane. And the other part of it is usually as tabular fractures, people who have that, the damage that caused it is so severe they've got other things wrong too like organ damage or um, other broken bones things like that so we got him transferred to the hospital of special surgery which is one of the top orthopedic hospitals in the country and possibly the world because basically my mom called up one of the surgeon's offices surgeon who's the kind we needed which was a orthopedic trauma surgeon yeah and basically said to him look I've got you know my son-in-law has a you know just fell he's got an acetabular fracture nothing else wrong and he's in a hospital that can't do the surgery would you take him we got transferred to the hospital for special surgery later that day. He'd spent four days in the hospital waiting to go to the nearest hospital that could treat him. The second that the hospital for special surgery, which um, they're a teaching hospital, so they're very focused on finding interesting cases for their patients. My mom called and gave them the information they needed, which was that this is a weird case. And they went, we'll take that, and took him in. Um, so it's about figuring out what the doctor will find interesting, not what you find interesting. Um, you know, we cared that he was injured. We cared that he needed to be fixed. But they cared that it was a very unusual bone fracture, and it would be an interesting um, surgery to do. And it was something that would give their, um, give their attending some new useful experiences, things like that. So if you're dealing with something that doesn't fit the norms, figure out what that thing is and lead with that. Uh, another example of that one is, um, like I said, Al's injury was weird. And so the other part of it that we really worked on was um, when we finally did get a doctor saying, I think he might have pernicious anemia, but that's not my area of expertise. You need to see, um, you need to see a, um, you need to see a hematologist. When I called the hematologist's office, his office was ready to just be like, uh, sorry, uh, you can, you know, oh, that's a serious condition that needs to be checked. We'll get one of the other doctors to see, you know, to see your partner. Um, 
the, the main doctor, you know, kind of is too busy for this. I paused, I stopped them and I said, look, he's 38 and has osteoporosis. And that's why we think he has pernicious anemia. They put me through to the secretary at his, at that, the, the doctor's secretary. So like the person who directly schedules everything for that doctor and manages things for him. I talked to her. Al was seeing that doctor the next day. He went from being told, oh no, we'll get you fobbed off to somebody else and good luck to, yep, we'll see you tomorrow. This is a doctor that you usually will take, you know, probably three to six months to see. The doctor found him interesting. The, ner the, the secretary knew, the scheduler knew that the doctor would find him interesting. So he got in right away. Again, you don't want to make anything up because you need the doctor to be interested when they meet you and you get them more details. But if you know that something about your condition or your situation is really unusual, use that. And like I said, all that that means is just lead with that at the office. Don't say, oh, is there an appointment available? Say, I have this issue and I need to see this doctor. Can you schedule me? Okay, I'll take that, but can you also put me on the wait list? And that's probably, not guaranteed, but probably gonna get you seen sooner. So, um, I hope you're all doing well, and I'm gonna try to do these a little more often. And I'm also gonna link uh, some of the posts that I've written that um, talk about some of this. But I just wanted to hop on, say hi, and I uh, hope you all have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Bye.